So let's take a look at uh, information systems strategies. When we use the term strategic planning, we're talking about a long-term direction that the enterprise wants to take in working with information technology, hopefully with the goal to better meet your business objectives or to move as business objectives change. In fact, it's something important to remember that when you think about where a company is today and you ask them what were they doing five years ago, it's almost like they're a whole new company in many ways. And we have to be able to keep up with that uh, in the uh, world of IT as well. So this would be uh, the goal anyway of having strategic planning is to try to include uh, and identify any of the cost-effective IT solutions we might have out there. Now, this is where things like cloud computing come in. People are seeing cloud computing or just through the use of virtualization as being a cost-effective solution because now uh, they can buy one physical server instead of buying many uh, and, and therefore you know, reducing hardware and power consumption costs and running you know, uh, either uh, Windows Hyper-V or running uh, VMware on that and loading up different servers, providing different services on one hardware platform. And, and so there people said, well, there's a cost-effective solution. We're getting all those services that we need. We're spending a whole lot less in hardware. And because we don't have all those servers running and all those fans and everything else, we're saving money in power consumption and rack space. And we can go on and on and on. And that's kind of where the cloud is too, because now we're saying, I'm not even buying the hardware. I'm just sending it to the cloud and it's going somewhere. Um, so anyway, that's the type of things that we're talking about with strategic planning. Uh, the other part of it is to address you know, problems and opportunities um, that, that we are occurring or might incur as we move forward. We want the strategic plan to help us develop an action plan to identify and acquire the needed resources. And remember, it's for a three to five year process. So I'm not planning something strategically to do next month, but where I want to be in a few years from this point. Now, strategic planning should involve a consideration of the enterprise requirements for your new and revised or even upgraded IT systems. That means your plan should determine what the requirements for the new and revised systems are going to be and how that's going to be integrated with the organization's strategic intentions. You need to understand what IT capabilities will be needed you know, to, in the future to support whatever those plans are. And with that, you want to understand the costs and the risks that are going to be associated with those requirements because there are certainly going to be costs if it's new hardware, new software, new direction. But with increases in technology, we have uh, the potential of bringing a whole new set of risks into our organization, either because of a new process, a new software program, new hardware device, new change to the network, all of that. So we want to make sure that we're taking all of that into account through the uh, strategic planning. The auditor should take the importance of strategic planning into consideration during the process of doing an audit. It's important that these plans are synchronized to the organization's strategies. As an auditor, we should uh, assess how the plans are taken into account in the IT strategy formulation. We should be looking to see if uh, there are requirements in place for updating and for communicating these plans. We should also look to see if there are processes for monitoring and evaluating the requirements that are needed. In other words, in a way, we are talking about auditing the strategic planning and putting that in combination with uh, our audits of the existing IT infrastructure. Going back to the steering committee, we might uh, use one to help us in the formulation of some of these uh, options uh, that we're looking at because the committee should know about the IS department policies, procedures, and practices. And the primary function of, this, of the steering committee is to basically review both long and short range plans. To be able to help in reviewing and maybe even making approval for major acquisitions, to approve and monitor major projects, for them to review and approve sourcing strategies, whether you're using an internal source or are going to hire an external source. They should review the adequacy of resource allocation um, as far as the resources with regards to time, to personnel, and to equipment. And the committee should report to the board of directors with their information. Now, the, the last one right before that, when we talk about resource allocation, remember that the resources, as I've said, is more than equipment and personnel, but you know, I haven't emphasized enough that resources is also time. You know, I know what I want to do. I know when I want it to be done. That's my resource, my deadline. But do I have the sufficient personnel or equipment 
also readily available to help meet that requirement. So uh, that's what the steering committee is supposed to do is to pretty much, if you think about what the name stands for, steering committee, helping us steer through these, uh, these different uh, short and long range plans that we have and, uh, and to be able to look at all facets of the plan. Anyway, so that's another consideration is to have one of those steering committees.